This is a patient who's been referred from out of town with a 29 millimeter eye. He has not been vitrectomized and the whole lens bag complex has dropped back onto the retina. Um, here we're placing 25 gauge pars plane trocars, uh, making a paracentesis. And uh, I'm going to inject uh, lidocaine and uh, epinephrine into the anterior chamber to dilate his pupil a bit. And now I'm placing dispersive viscoelastic into the recess uh, of the angle to uh, keep the pupil dilated and protect the cornea. I switched to cohesive viscoelastic to push that dispersive viscoelastic uh, against the cornea. And now I'm going to modify my maxi grip forceps so the jaws will open wide enough to grab the lens when I need to. So first I'm going to do a complete pars plane of vitrectomy uh, with posterior visualization. Uh, you can see the lens bag complex sitting on the retina. Uh, I want to do a very uh, complete peripheral vitrectomy so that when I do my Imani I won't be passing the needles through vitreous. I want to clean this up really well uh, as this is a long 29 millimeter eye and you want a really good vitrectomy here. Uh, when the vitrectomy is completed and I've gone way out to the vitreous base and uh, removed everything, I'll do scleral depression. Uh, and then um, I'm going to come back and uh, go after uh, the lens itself. Here's the lens bag complex sitting on the retina. I'm going to aspirate that with my 25 gauge vitrector, keep the vacuum on full. When I switch to an anterior view, go through the pars planar with the maxi grip forceps and grab the haptic of the lens securely. I'll now hand the lens to a micro forceps coming through the paracentesis so I can bring this forward and then hand over, hand it to myself uh, using another 23 gauge forceps uh, to securely grasp the optic of the lens and then I can dial the lens bag complex with all the summerings ring material into the anterior chamber completely. Uh, I'm now going to shut the infusion off, add viscoelastic to protect the cornea, and cut the lens 90% of the way through, just leaving a tiny little hinge, as you can see right here. And that means when I pull this half of the lens out, the other half will follow and not fall posteriorly. Uh, I can go ahead and grab this and pull this out. Uh, I've turned the infusion back on, and now I want to trap these summerings ring segments and force them out through my incision, and I don't want them to fall back. So I'm going to be very careful manipulating them in such a way that the infusion pressure guides them out the main incision, and the remaining summering ring segments do not fall back onto the retina. I've raised my infusion pressure up significantly to force these fragments out, and you'll see me manipulate this last piece uh, so that the uh, tip is guided into the incision and it comes right out. Uh, we're now going to mark the eye so that I can do Yamani intrascleral haptic fixation. Uh, these marks are placed about 2.3 millimeters posterior to the limbus. The lens is injected and uh, I shut the infusion off and place a little viscoelastic on top of the lens to protect the cornea and to prevent egress of fluid out the main incision. I turn the infusion back on and I'm going to do my first needle pass with my TSK needle. Uh, I put the haptic into the uh, lumen of the needle, uh, about three millimeters, um, and then I just sort of let go of this needle after I push the second haptic into the anterior chamber. Uh, I can now focus on the second needle pass. Uh, using another 30 gauge needle. I make a fairly long needle pass because the sclera is going to be a little thin on this 29 millimeter eye. I use the needle to push the optic away so I can grab the tip of the haptic about three millimeters back of the um, tip of the haptic. Uh, and then I'm going to guide this into my uh, 30 gauge needle and be very careful not to crimp or damage the haptic when I do this. It has to slide right in without any force. Now both uh, needles are going to be withdrawn from the eye, externalizing the haptics. The infusion is on while I do this, and you can see uh, the chamber remains very well formed. Uh, I'm going to melt a little flange and push this in. The other side I'm going to melt the flange and push this in. 
It's very important to push the tip of the flange all the way in as much as possible and make sure the conjunctiva and tenons move freely over the tip of the flange. I'll now remove viscoelastic from the anterior chamber with the vitrector with the cutter off, bring the pupil down with myocol, and because this is such a large eye, I'm going to make two peripheral iridotomies with the vitrector, uh, one temporally and one inferiorly to guard against reverse pupillary block. Uh, the case is completed now. I'm removing my trocars and doing a little cautery uh, to kind of seal this area here so there won't be any leakage. Uh, I push the conjunctiva against the globe and cauterize right there to create a little scarring in that area, and the case is completed. Thank you for your attention.